But Lord, we would have the spirit of understanding and the spirit of revelation, Lord, that there'll be no confusion, that there'll be clarity, and that everything you declare will come to pass. We declare we are good soil, that every word that's sown into our hearts, Lord, the seed will bear fruit. Let me give you glory and honor. Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you could turn the lights on, that would be great. So everybody can get their Bibles rolling. So how's everybody doing? Good. Everything wonderful? Everybody's happy to go to church today? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy. I know. I'm, 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 I'm liking church now. I like church. I, I'm liking a lot of I like work. I like church. I just I like going to I like going home after work, Aww. and everything's good. I like it. I just like it. You know, you, you know, you always you, you dream of getting to that point in your life where you begin to like life. Aww. I don't know how you know. I don't know how to describe it, but I grew up in a culture of delayed gratification, where it's all about sacrifice and do what you have to do now so that later you'll be able to benefit from it. You push now, you sacrifice now, you do what you have to do now, and later you enjoy it. And I feel like, you know what, I'm, in, I'm, I'm enjoying it now. Sweet. I'm enjoying it. Sweet. You know, and I'm happy to be here. You get here, we have our gray chairs and <laughs> our brown carpet and our flexible screens, etc. You know, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy. You know, I thank God. I thank God for, for every little thing. You know, every person we have, in every lampshade. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, he's a good God. Mm -hmm. Every little thing, you know. And... Yeah. You know, as we preach this message, I believe there's, there's a breakthrough on the horizon for, for us individually and us as a group. So let's, let's get into this meat and potatoes. So our goal is unity of the faith. And that's what we're focused on in this current series. So let's go ahead and read Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 on the screen. After 3, 2, 3. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we know that our assignment within the fivefold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, continues until the entire church is unified in the faith. Let's go to Jesus' prayer for unity, John 17, 9 to 23. Everybody knows when Jesus prays, God answers it, right? It's true. So that's a good prayer. Because the best prayer is a prayer that God answers. Can't beat that prayer. John 17, 9 to 23. I will go with the New King James Version. If you have the New King James Version, let's read together. Everyone else, you just kind of read along. John 17, 9 to 23. After 3, 2, 3, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I in them, and you in me that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me, and I have declared to them your name, 
and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. So when Jesus knew that the time of his death was imminent, he prayed one of the most important prayers he had ever prayed. He prayed for unity in his body and contained in that prayer our secrets for divine unity. And I, when we go through that scripture, here are the seven secrets of divine unity we see in that scripture. Jesus' secrets of unity. Let's read them together after three, two, three. The name of Christ unites. God's word sets us apart. Our mission unites us. We are only one in him. God's glory unites us. Unity testifies of Jesus and the love of Christ unites us. So we are focused now on number five, God's glory unites us. God's glory makes us one. John 17, 22 to 23. Let's read it together on the screen. Two, three. And the glory which you give me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So God's glory makes us one. And as a result, it's important for God's glory to be evident among us if we are to experience true unity. So what is God's glory? What's the Hebrew word for God's glory? Kabod. Let's say it again. Kabod. That's God's substance, His essence, His heavy presence. When God shows up in His glory, everyone present feels the weight of it. It talks about weightiness. And that's one way to look at God's glory. What else is God's glory? What's the Greek word for God's glory? Doxa, the unspoken manifestation of God, the divine quality of God, God's infinite intrinsic worth. The word I see being used the most in, I don't know, church situations is Shekinah. And they use Shekinah, but the thing is, it didn't translate into the word glory. So that was, that's why I was like, the word doesn't, it doesn't mean glory, but it does represent it. So they used Shekinah the way you would use um, when the, the cloud would guide the children of Israel by day and the fire by night. It is, it's essentially the glory of God. That was the presence of the Lord that was with them everywhere they went. So that's why people use Shekinah. But the word itself does not directly translate into glory. So as a result, we're going to go with Doxa. We're going to go with Kabod. But remember, you're going to see Shekinah a lot when people talk about glory. They see the Shekinah glory of God. So we know it's all the same thing. The manifest presence of God. It's whenever, whenever we talk about, you know, here is the, the, the candlestick, and here is the presence of the Lord. Here is this, this is Jesus manifesting himself, the smoke. People use Shekinah, but we know, all right? So we use the words that are directly translated, but Shekinah is also a word that's used a lot to talk of the glory of God. So what can we do to invite God's glory? Let's go through the list from number one after three, two, three. Pursue a deeper relationship with him. Two, join together in agreement. Three, heartfelt prayer. Four, true worship. Five, faith. Six, purity of heart. So we have gone through one to four. And today we are going to go on to one of my favorite topics, faith. Seek God and find him. Somebody say, seek God. God. And, find them. and find them. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13 on the screen. Let's read it together. After three, two, three. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart. So this is a message from from God to turn of Israel and you tell them you're going to be in prison and you're going to go through a, a lot of things and enslaved and all of that but then the day is going to come when you'll get set free and it's like when that day comes look you're going to seek me you're going to find me if you seek me with your whole heart and that's really the essence of what we grab out of this where God is saying look I can be found but there's one criteria for the people to find me and that's you got to look for me with your whole heart. Everybody understands that? And that's going to come important as we dig deep into this. Where he's like, look, you can't half step look for me. It can't be, well, let me go get God, yes? No, 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 you're going you're gonna to find, you're going to find, you're going to find nothing. God's like, if, you, if your heart's not into it, if you're not really into me, 
I'm not gonna manifest myself. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be doing things by rote, by religion, you're just gonna do it. It's gonna half do it. You, 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 you might pray, you might sing a song, you might read a, a Christian book every now and then, but you're not going to get a revelation of who God is and God's not gonna manifest himself in your life until you make the decision, I'm gonna go after him with my entire heart. He's not going to be satisfied, but you have stepping. That's just how God is. He's one of those. He's like, listen, you, you, you know, if you're not really into me, then cool. You do what you do. But when you're ready, I'm going to be over here. Kind of like what Pastor Angel told me. She's like, when you're ready, you call at me. I was like, all right. That's fine. I waited until I was ready. But so be it. Yeah, it was quick. God wants us to call upon him. Wow, that's supposed to be he. He wants us to pray and he promises to listen. He wants us to seek him and he promises that we will find him. However, there is one condition. We must seek him with our whole heart. In other words, nothing and nobody else must come before him. If we want to find him, he wants it all. So the first thing we're we, 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 we going to get into as we get into faith invites God's glory is that God wants people to come after him with all of their hearts. That's just how God is. You gotta be all in. He's that kind of guy. He's like, you gotta be all in or nothing. You want me? Come for me for real. And thankfully, since he can read our hearts and our minds, etc., he knows who's serious and who's not serious. And perhaps that could be what God's waiting for to manifest himself in some people's lives, where he's like, I'm right there. It's just that you gotta be serious. You get serious. I'm going to show up, and I'm going to show up big. Everybody understands that? Yeah. And for those of us who get a revelation of the importance of God's glory, of God's manifesting himself to us, we will understand that the price we have to pay for that to happen in our lives is all of our heart. And we got to decide that for ourselves. Whether or not we're at that stage where we're ready to give him all. Because some of us are, some of us aren't. Some of us are like, listen, I'm ready to give God all my heart yet. And he's like, cool, you're not ready for no manifestation. And whenever you're ready, you, you know, you know, you know, you know what works. And you decide. And the day is going to come when you decide, you know what, all right, I'm going to give God all my heart. And he's like, good, <coughs> then I'm going to manifest myself. Until then, you're going to have to watch everybody else experience something and be like, wow, I know what's up with them. Nope, you don't know. Because until you give all of your heart, you're just never going to get it. And you're never going to understand what God's really like. You're never going to see him show himself to you the way that many others have experienced throughout history. I was watching yesterday the Bible. You remember the Bible? The first, first episode of the Bible. Well, not first episode, the first year of the Bible series. And I was just watching it, catching up on, on, on old editions of it because I didn't see the first year. So I'm out there watching the Bible yesterday. And I was watching people like Abraham and Moses and watching them operating the power of God. I'm watching like Abraham talk to God, God showed up with two angels to chat with him and stuff and say, yeah, um, you're going to have a child, Sarah. And then by the way, we're heading over to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're about to go tear them up. And Abraham's like, well, God, I don't know. But what do you think if 50 people there might, you know, might, might, might be good, you know, would you still destroy them? And I mean, and I'm just watching these people interact and it's a story to us, kind of like Superman and Batman, but it's real. And these were really people who walk with God and talk to God and walk in the power of God. I watch, I watch Moses put his rod in the, in the Red Sea and it part, and I was like, this is real. This is not, this is not X-Men. Yeah. This is real people who really encountered God and really saw God manifest himself. And for, re for I mean, for a smidgen of a moment, I got that hunger back, that fire of, you know what? What would it be like to finally get to that point where you could see God really manifest himself on a serious level? Like on a real level. I mean, many of us are satisfied with the, the morsel that we have. It is what it is. And you might be good, that's cool. You know, but what would it be like for real? You know? Saturday, we go to see some stuff and we go to Rain and Monkey's meeting, you know, Saturday and Sunday. These are people who do this every day. So for them, it's not a special occasion. This is life, you know, but we're going to experience some things there, which I'm sure is going to fire us up. We're going to come back like, yes, we can do this. We know that because you know what it is. You, you got to see it's kind of like, you know, 
Um, people always talk about, my dad always cracked the joke, you always know when a brand new um, karate movie came out. Because all the way from the theater, there's like dents and trash cans and stuff. Because you could tell people wake up walking, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And same, same thing, like the Olympics, when the Olympics come around, people be out working out and stuff. Because you're inspired. You're inspired by whatever it is you're seeing. In the same way, it's like you see people operating in, in the power of God. You start thinking, hmm, what if I, I see something and somebody get healed, boy? What's that going to be like, boy? What if I cast out a devil or, or two on my way from, from school, you know? What, what, what if I raise someone from the dead? What, what, what would happen if I declare something and it comes to pass? Your, your, your hunger comes back, you know? And God is just like, the one thing you have to do to find me is seek me with your whole heart. It's like it's not complex. It's like if you're willing to come all in, you're going to see me manifest myself. Everybody understands that? And the thing about it is, faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. On the screen, let's read it in the New King James Version. After 3, 2, 3. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's read that last phrase from and. Two, three. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when the scripture says without faith it's impossible to please God, it then says there's two things you have to believe. If you want God to be pleased, if you want God to be like, wow, I like you. I like this. This is nice. You have to believe that he is. So you've got to believe in, in, in God, number one. And then you have to believe that he rewards those who diligently yeah. seek him. What's that D word? Diligently seek him. Which is another way of saying seek him with your whole heart. He's like, God rewards those who diligently seek him. And he's like, look, part of your demonstration of faith is that you believe that he does that. In other words, part of my faith or part of my demonstration of my faith is that whatever it is I believe from God or I believe God to be or, or whatever I believe God has said, I have to believe it with all of my heart. I got to believe it diligently. I have to hold on to it. Forever. Like, I don't let that go. God's like, that is the kind of faith I'm talking about. And that's the faith that pleases me. You believe in me. You believe I'm here. You believe I exist. You believe I am who I say I am. But then, you got to seek me. And you got to be diligent about it. And there's no need for diligent seeking if you don't have to wait some time before the manifestation. Because if, if instantly, as soon as you believe you get it, there's no need to diligently seek him. You seek him, boom, you get it. There's, there, there is a need, henceforth, for diligent seeking of the Lord because God does not always instantly grant you whatever it is you're believing for. And part of his desire to be pleased comes from us believing him and seeking him diligently. He wants to be sought after. That's something that God desires. Everybody understands that? Faith pleases God. So if we want God to manifest himself in his glory in our midst, we need to please him. And without faith, that is impossible. Just to approach him, we must truly believe him. We must believe that if we earnestly seek him, he will reward us with his presence. Let's read that on the screen together. After three, two, three. If we want God to manifest himself, in his glory, in our midst, we need to please him. And without faith, that is impossible. Just to approach him, we must truly believe him. We must believe that if we earnestly seek him, he will reward us with his presence. So God's like, don't even come to me if you don't believe me. Like, don't come to him and you don't believe. He's like, believe me. That's like your ticket. He's like, do you believe me? Yes, all right. You can go. You believe me? Yes. Come on in. It's like, that, that, that's, that's the password at the door. He's like, you don't get into his presence and you don't believe him. You don't come into God's presence like, well, I don't know about him. I, I'm not too sure. I mean, I mean, he says stuff, but I don't know if I'm really into that. 
God was like, well, I don't know if I'm into you either, so uh, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. He's like, I can't just be talking and you look at it and be like, I don't care what you say. God was like, you need to believe me. And I, that's the least we can do. And that's what we hold on to. That's what makes us Christians. We believe God. We don't know everything. We can't do everything. We don't have the power to make anything happen. We can only believe the one who does. And that's the thing when somebody tells us, look at that powerful Christian. It's not really a powerful Christian. It's somebody who believes in God's power. It's God's power. He's the one doing everything. It's just that we're not all on the same level of belief. Yeah. And some of us who believe more are seeing more. And some of us who believe less are seeing less. Some of us, some of us who don't believe are seeing nothing. But it's all God's power. Yeah. Like, well, he had real power. Well, yeah, technically, he believed. And he believed and he for real believed. And because he believed, God's manifesting himself through this person. Because yeah. everything we get from God comes by faith. Yeah, that's true. So whatever we have faith in, we can have. And the more faith we have, the more we can see of what God has. Everybody understands that? Yeah. So just for us to approach God, we got to believe in him. Just for us to approach God, we got to believe that if we seek him, we'll find him. Yeah. Everybody understands that? And we're saying, look, we believe that God's glory can manifest in this place, will manifest in this place, shall manifest in this place, that we will see him manifest himself. Yeah. And we're going to keep doing like kids and keep swinging to hit that pinata until sweets start falling everywhere. And people start getting healed and delivered and miracles start happening and our lives are transformed. And that's what we're going to keep doing until it happens. Why? Because we believe if we diligently seek him, he will reward us. We believe that. We don't question that. Even though we know we can't make it happen, we just know we're going to diligently seek him. Yeah. And we know that God's going to respond. Because that's what God says. He's like, he's not pleased if there's no faith. Right. Everybody understands that? So we got to see God's glory by faith. Here is where Jesus shows us that we can see his glory by faith. John eleven forty, New King James Version. John eleven forty, New King James Version. Let's read John eleven forty together on the screen after three, two, three. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? He said, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Did I not say it to you? So here is Jesus saying, if you would believe, I can do some stuff. If you would believe, I can manifest myself. If you, if you would believe, I can show up. And our job here is to get to the point where all of us believe. Because God's like, if you would believe, you can see the glory of God. So obviously we know then that Moses believed because he saw the glory of God. The disciples believed. He saw, they saw the glory of God. The early church believed. There was a lot of believers all through the scripture. Because they saw the glory of God. And God's like, you want to see the glory of God? And we're like, yes. He's mm -hmm. like, so what do you need to do? I don't know. He's like, well, let me tell you. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And this is God, you know, this is Jesus talking to Martha and Mary, one of the sisters after Lazarus died. And he gets there and... He's like, uh, your brother's going to live again. And they're like, uh, of course. At the resurrection, of course. We, we know that. Thank you, Captain Obvious. And Jesus is like, no, I'm talking about like right now. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. Or though he dies, he will live again. Did I not see that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? You, did I not say if you would believe, I will manifest myself. I will show you all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he, he asked a, a very interesting question to, to 
matter. He's like, he told her what would happen because of the resurrection. Then he says, believest thou this? He asked her, do you believe? Now, I don't know if, if she had said no, if you had been like, well, cool, guys, we're done here. I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. All I know is she gave him the right answer. She said, Lord, I believe. And he's like, good. Step aside. Where, where's, where's Lazarus? And he went and raised him out from the dead. Because his big thing is, just like Hebrews 11, 6 says, look, I just want to be believed. He's like, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You've got to believe that he is, and you've got to believe he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. He wants to be believed. That's God's number one desire. I want you to believe me. If I say something, you need to believe me. Everybody understand? I don't just want you singing songs to me. I don't just want you dancing. You've got to believe me. When I say something, that matters. It, it touches God's heart when he speaks to us, and we actually believe him. Self, some of us don't always, you know, we don't always believe. God says I'm something to us and we're like, well, easy for you to say, you're supernatural. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the one down here struggling. But God's like, you gotta believe in her. And that's the secret. Will we believe? Because there's things God has said to each of us. Do we believe it? And could it be that our belief is the key to the manifestation of what he said? Could it be that when he says something, the word sticks out there in the air and our belief is what grabs it and brings it down into the natural, into reality? Because here's Jesus saying, did I not say that if, if, it's if, you would believe, you would see the glory of God, which means if you would not believe, you just might not see it. Everybody understand that? See God's glory by faith. So God's glory manifests in an atmosphere of faith and expectation. If we want to see God's glory, we have to be people of great faith. Which means, that should be means, we have to be people who hear and believe God's word. For us to see God manifest himself with us, we have to be people of great faith. We have to be people who believe God's word. Every single day, aspect of this thing is important. We talked about you got to be close to God. We talked about prayer. We talked about worship. We talked about so many different things. We talked about agreement. And today we're talking about another important factor for us to see God manifest himself among us. We got to be people of great faith and expectation. Yes. We got to walk into church full of faith and expectation. We believe God's going to do something. Pastor Angel and I, we always encourage each other. Every time we come to church, we always be like, this could be the Sunday. This could be the Sunday. This just might be the Sunday. Who knows? This could be the Sunday. And every Sunday could be that Sunday. This could be that Sunday. And we believe. Because yeah. you don't know. And the last thing I need is to be in the way of God manifesting something. Yeah. And if God's like, I need you to believe for me to do it, at least let's get one thing out of the way. I believe. Yes. The rest is on you now. But I'm not going to be in the way of my manifestation. It can't be, well, pfft, had you believed I would have done it, that's not going to ever happen. I want to be like, I believe. Now you do what you want to do. Because that, that's the easy part. I believe. Because I do not have to be the one bringing the power. I don't have to come in a smoke machine and say, that's the glory of God. Shh, shh. I don't have to pretend. I ain't got to do that. I ain't got to pretend. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got to try to do sometimes. But I'm just saying, we're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we, we ain't going to pretend. My thing is, we got to trust God, and that's all we're going to do. We're just going to believe, I'm just going to try, I'm going to swing, and hopefully one of these days going to be that day. We can't make God do anything. I'll be like, God, you're going to do it today. You're going to do it, because I said so. God's going to be like, uh, right. The last guy I wrestled, he's, he had to limp after. I tapped his thigh. Do you want me to tap your thigh? No, I'm good, I'm good. My thigh's good. <laughs> he's like, good. Then when I'm ready, I'll do what I do. You can't be making me do anything. I can't, nobody does that. You know what I'm saying? You ask. And then you wait. That's why we start waiting here for you. You wait. Whenever he's ready, he's going to do what he's going to do. We just go wait. Because we do not have the power to make God do anything. But we're going to believe. And we're going to expect it. And every Sunday, we're going to think, this is a Sunday. Everybody understand that? So if we, if we look at you and say, this just might be the Sunday, you know what we're talking about. We believe God to manifest himself. But what is faith? Because many of us have 
different ideas of it, we might as well go ahead and bring it home. What is faith? When we say faith, it's a Christian word. It's a word that's in church. And because we hear it a lot in church, we assume everybody knows. Let's just make sure we're all on the same page. What is faith? Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Let's read it together on the screen. Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. After 3, 2, 3. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are invisible. So, you know, this is one of those scriptures that I wouldn't call this low-hanging fruit because it's not that simple to understand. This one is going to take a little effort. You've got to squeeze this one a little bit. You've got to work a little bit, which is fine. Can't be lazy. Some stuff God just gives it to you. Some stuff you've got to work a little bit, which is fine. We're going to be all right. So we know, number one, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So we get that first. So we know, yes, the things I'm hoping for, the only thing I can hold on to is my faith, right? And it says faith is the evidence of things not seen. So at least up front is telling you something that's not visible right now is what I'm holding on to by faith. And the evidence of it is my faith. I can tell that you have something coming in your life because you believing that something. Everybody understand that? Yeah. And uh, obviously that's not enough. First, to understand it, because that's way too abstract. So we're going to keep going. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Mm -hmm. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So let's get into this now. Here we understand that the worlds were framed by what? The word. the word of God. So faith, we are now seeing another dimension of it, where we're saying that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So we're seeing now faith has something to do with taking the invisible and making it visible by the word of God. Yeah. It has something to do with taking the invisible and making it visible by the word of God. Everybody understands that? Yeah. And faith helps us to understand that. That the whole world, everything we see, once was invisible and was made visible by the word of God. All right? Keep moving. James 2.26. What is faith? Let's read it together on the screen. Two, three. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James is an awesome guy. I was watching a documentary one time, and they talked about James. I know James is a little controversial. Because James, James kind of brought, he brought everybody back down to earth, which I love about James. If you read James, James talks about be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. He's that guy. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives to all men freely. And he says, but let him ask in faith and not doubt, because he that doubts is like, a, is like a ship wavering in the sea or whatever. He's like, he'll, let him not think he'll get anything of the Lord. He's that kind of guy. James is a very in-your-face, look, guys, we're, we're dreaming, we're in outer space, get down to the ground, straight to, straight to the point kind of guy. And he comes and he says, listen, everybody's talking about this faith thing, faith thing, and you got faith and your faith and I faith and we're all faith people. Faith that our works is dead. And he's like, unless there is some evidence of it tangible now, beyond the invisible evidence that you believe in, in you will have no faith. He's like, when you really have faith, I'll be, I'll be seeing it. You're going to act like it. Your, your, your actions will be evidence of faith for me. So it's not just you telling me, all right, it's not just you telling me that you have faith in something. How you act is going to tell me that. Your works give me evidence that you really believe something. Everybody understands that? You change when you believe. That's true. If I believe, whatever I believe, my whole action plan, the way I carry myself, is going to totally change. You know what I'm saying? It's like when it's like a couple's having a baby. The baby didn't come yet. And they have a room and they painted it and they bought all these things. They believe. <laughs> they believe that the day that the doctor gave them or a week before, a week after, whatever, they're going to be bringing a baby home. They believe. And their actions have proven that they really do believe that. Everybody understands that? And our job is to ensure that if we say we have faith in whatever, we need to show it by our actions. And we have faith that the 
Holy Ghost is going to manifest himself in this place, that the glory of God is going to descend on this place, that we are going to feel the weight of God's presence, that God's going to be with us, that we're not just going to be here, put it in human effort and be like, man, we need more humans to help us put in this human effort. No, we need the Holy Ghost. And we're saying, Holy Ghost, if you could just show up, everything's going to be fine. And that's what we want. We believe it. And our actions are going to verify that, which means we're going to come and we're going to worship and we're going to come every Sunday and we're going to look around and be like, is this a Sunday? Is this a Sunday? This could be the Sunday. Does anything feel strange today? This could be the Sunday. Everybody understands that? So faith is complete trust in the invisible evidence provided by the word of God confirmed by commensurate action. Yes. A comprehensive definition of faith. Uh, one of my books I was writing, I think it's one of the books, Faith Science, I think it is. I came up with this definition using three scriptures, the two you just saw and then the one we're about to do. Faith is complete trust in the invisible evidence provided by the word of God, confirmed by commensurate action. For us to see God's manifested word and presence in our lives, we must believe his word to be true for us and act like we believe it. What does that mean? There was, there was a guy who wanted Jesus to heal him. And he said, you know, Jesus, if you will, would you please heal and then jesus said i will and then he did what he needed to do and the bottom line was he knew that jesus could heal him he knew that jesus had the power to heal him but he wanted to know if jesus was willing to do it for him in other words some of us have gotten past uh, this bible stuff is like x-men so it's just storybook to the point of yes we believe that this is real but we may still be at the, we believe it's real for them. That's amazing for him. But until it gets to the point where we can believe it for us, we're still not going to see it manifested. So the step one is just believe it is real. Yeah. And step two is you got to believe it is real for you. That it could happen for me. That the same thing we believe, you know what? Yeah, this really did happen in the book of Acts. This really did happen to the early church. That's step one. Step two is, but it could happen for us too. If we do what God says. Yeah. If we draw an iron to him, you draw an iron to us. If we have the power agreement, where two or three are gathered in the same day, he is in the midst. If we praise, if we worship, if we pray, the same way he manifested for Solomon, he manifests for us. If we worship, the same thing we see in the upper room, well, that's the upper, upper room. In the throne room, we'll see it happen with us. We gotta believe all of these things and we're gonna act like it. Everybody understand that? Yeah. And we gotta believe it for us. Everything, you gotta believe it for you. Yeah. And that takes a, it takes a while because the truth is, you just believing that it happened like a story is not enough to fight to manifest in your life. Amen. It has to get to the point where you believe it for you. Like, wow, this happened for me too. Amen. Then, it could happen for you. Everybody understand that? So let's read this definition of faith on the screen together. All together after three, two, three. Faith is complete trust in the invisible evidence provided by the word of God, confirmed by commensurate action. For us to see God's manifested word and presence in our lives, we must believe his word to be true for us and act like we believe it. Everybody understand that? So we're going to believe that whatever word it is we're standing on is true for me. God can do it for me, not just God can do it. Yeah. That's not enough. Just like how the scripture says, without faith it is impossible to please him, for we must believe that he is, mm -hmm. and he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it can't just be, yeah, God can do those things. God's amazing. It's God's amazing. And if I seek him diligently, he will reward me too. Everybody understands that? Where does faith come from? Where does faith come from? Romans 10, 13 to 17. Where does faith come from? If I need faith to see God manifest himself, I need to know where I'm getting that faith from. Everybody understands that? Romans 10, 13 to 17. Where does faith come 
from? Let us answer that question, Romans 10, 13 to 17. We're gonna, it's going to go over into a second screen. So once you see dot, 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 that means we're going over to the next screen. After three, let's go from four, two, three. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So where does faith come from? Hearing. And hearing what? The word. By the word of God. So here we see, if I need faith in my life, I need to hear something. And for me to hear, I need what? The, word of God. the what? Word. The word of God. I need the word of God for me to have faith. So if I know faith is so crucial for me to see the glory of God, then I need the word of God so that I can have faith, so that I can see God manifest himself. He said, you know what? Did I not say that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And he's like, yeah, but how are you going to believe? How, how are you going to believe? If you haven't heard. It's like, how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? If you don't hear something to believe in, what are you believing in? You've got to have to some, you got to hear something. For you to believe in that something. And you can't hear without somebody telling it to you. It's not just going to magically happen. Yeah. Everyone understands that? And then how shall they preach? Unless they are sent. Somebody can't just arbitrarily stand up and tell you. The Lord has to send them. And how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Who bring glad tidings of good things. Mm. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Everybody understands that? So, your faith is a direct reflection of the quality of the word of God you hear. You can't have any godly manifestations if you do not believe God. And you can't believe in a word of God that you have not heard. And you cannot hear a word of God without someone preaching it to you. And nobody can preach God's word without being sent or anointed by God. Let's go ahead and read this on the screen together after three, two, three. Your faith is a direct reflection of the quality of the word of God you hear. You can't have any godly manifestations if you do not believe God. You can't believe in a word of God that you have not heard. You cannot hear a word of God without someone preaching it to you. And nobody can preach God's word without being sent or anointed by God. It's a mouthful. But it's a good mouthful. Something to chew on. So where your faith is in life is a direct reflection of what you're hearing. What kind of word are you receiving? That is directly affecting your ability to believe. I can only believe the word of God I've heard. I can't believe anything else. Which is why someone said, well, you just have faith. What does that mean? Just have faith. Just have faith. Faith doesn't just exist. Well, guys, just you better have faith. It's going to work out. That's not good enough. My faith only comes from hearing and my hearing only comes by the word of God give me the word of God so I can have faith give me the word of God that I need to believe so I can have faith if I know my faith is weak and I need faith I need the word of God that I can believe in so it's better for you to tell me the word of God and say this is the word of God whatever it is believe that hold on to that versus just have faith. Well, just believe. You believe. Believe what? Just have faith. Faith in what? Because we, when we go abstract, we become useless. Well, just have faith. Abstract. That means nothing. Give me the word of God that I need to hold on to. That I can do something with. That is meaty. That has substance it. Because faith really comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. So then I, I start saying, if my faith needs to be built up, I need to be feeding myself the word of God on a consistent basis. I have to start saying, if I want to be one of great faith, then I need to be one of great word of God. And how much word of God 
am I getting? And what's the quality of the word of God I'm getting? Because that is the quality of the faith I will have. Yeah, I can only believe as much as the word of God I'm getting. Everybody understands that? You can't have somebody of great faith and they're not somebody of a great word of God. You're not getting a lot of word of God. You're not getting quality word of God. Your faith is going to reflect whatever it is you're getting. Yeah. Everybody understands that? So you can't have any godly manifestations if you do not believe God. Everywhere you want God to manifest himself in your life, you have to believe God in that area. I believe God for this. Hence, God can now manifest himself for this. I believe God in this area of my life. Hence, God can now manifest himself in this area of my life. So I can look at my life and say, where do I want God to manifest, my, manifest himself? And then I have to say, What's the word of God I'm standing on concerning that manifestation? So I'm like, listen, I want God to manifest himself in my finances. Then I need to have a word of God I can believe on so that God can manifest himself in my finances. So I have a scripture like, you know what? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And I understand the context of that scripture is he wrote a scripture, but not scripture. He wrote a letter to a group of people who were supporting his ministry. And he said, because of how you've been supporting this ministry, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So I'm going to stand on that because I know I've been sown into the kingdom of God. He's going to supply all of my needs. That's the word I have my faith on now. Hence, God can manifest himself in that area. Is that what I'm saying? In that area. Whatever area it is you want God to manifest himself in, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be sick. So I'm like, you know what? I will... Find the word of God I need to believe so that God can manifest himself in my health. So as a result, I'm going to Psalm 103 it on a consistent basis and say to myself, you know what? He heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. And I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to believe that he heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. And every day, I had to believe that. And that is the word upon which... I can put my faith. And now that I have the faith, God can manifest himself in that specific area of my life now. Everybody understands that? If I'm always anxious, I'm like, all right, I'm done with being anxious. I will be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I will make my request known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And I am going to say, my faith is in that specific word. I'm not going to have anxiety attacks. I'm not going to wake up in the middle of the night sweating with no panic attacks. Why? Because this is the word I'm standing on. And then God can now manifest himself as the peace of God. And God, my heart, and mind in Christ Jesus. Everybody understands that? So the quality of my faith is a direct reflection of the quality of the word of God I'm hearing. If I'm always getting milk, that's the muscles my faith will have. I will have milk muscles. If I'm eating meat, I will have meat muscles. But the quality of my faith is going to look like the word of God I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands that? Your faith is not going to outgrow the word. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have stronger faith than the word of God you're getting. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like, I want to be like Smith Wigglesworth. And you don't got no Smith Wigglesworth word. You got to get that kind of word to have that kind of faith. Mm -hmm. Where you could punch somebody in their belly and an ulcer fall out. That is a different level of faith. You can't just be on Jesus wept and try to do that. Jesus wept. And they're going to be like, no, you did not just punch me. <laughs> Nothing going to happen. Nothing going to happen. Everybody understands that? Yeah. And you got to see God's glory in his word. And this is the next level of that scripture where you can see God's glory in his word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God and the glory of God can be seen through the word of God. Hence, did Jesus say, look, did I not say it to you? If you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Believe what? Believe the word of God. And what the word of God have to do with the glory of God? Aha! Funny you should ask. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18, amplified version on the screen. See God's glory in his word. Somebody say, see God's glory, see God's glory. in his word. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. Let's read it together on the screen. Two, three. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage, freedom. And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the Word of God 
as in a mirror, the glory of God, are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I know. It's a mouthful. I know. It's a mouthful for me too. Some scriptures again tell me, like, woo, this one's tough. But that's all right. We got to go, we got we to gotta get meat and we got to get potatoes. We can't, just, we can't just eat snacks all the time. This is one of those. And all of us, as with unveiled face, now, this context comes from a discourse on the fact that Moses had a glory on him that was amazing to the point where he had to block his face with a veil so that when people look at him, they wouldn't be scared because he was glowing. And God's like, that was Moses' time. And if that was amazing and glorious and fantabulous, what about you guys? when you can now behold God's glory. And the Amplified Version makes it very clear. Because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So here's the scripture saying, because you continue to behold God as who he is in his word, this word you continue to behold starts to change you into it. You become more and more and more and more like the word of God that you consistently behold. Yeah. The word of God starts to change you without you having to change yourself. Mm -hmm. You will just realize you're not like what you were. Yeah. You're like, wow, I'm starting to act like this Bible boy. Mm -hmm. Because you're continuing to behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of God. You're beholding God. God, sometimes you can read, sometimes you can hear a word or you can see a word of God and feel the presence of God. I've done it before, where I have felt the presence of God while somebody was preaching. I mean, for real presence of the Lord, just from the preaching alone. Ain't nobody was singing no songs, ain't nobody was dancing, nobody was doing anything that usually triggers the presence of the Lord. A man was just preaching, Francis Chan. He would just stand up there in a jeans and a short t-shirt. It looked a size too small. Standing up there, everybody's sitting down, and he's just preaching. And that word was so profound. I see, I see, I cry. I, see, I, right, I was right next to him. He sat right in his preaching. I couldn't even call myself together. I, I, I could have fallen down and be like, that glory, just from words. That's all the mom was doing. He just preaching, just preaching. And I think he doesn't preach, he doesn't, he doesn't get excited and loud or nothing. But the stuff he was saying was so profound. And the presence of the Lord was in those words. Yes. The words had the power. When Jesus said, the, the words that I speak, they are spirit in their life. The words were spirit and they were life. Jesus. There was nothing, there was nobody beating any drums. There was nothing emotional about the experience. It was just the pure word of God. Anybody who have a heart for the word of God, you know what it's like when you just hear a pure word of God that's so rich. And you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, this is like... Your ears are like buzzing, like, what? What am I hearing right now? It's, uh, it's ah! I just want to go crazy, and everybody's like, what's up with you? You don't understand. Did you hear what the man just said? Like, and, and, and the thing is, everybody doesn't get it. And we can all sit in the same room and hear the same word, and everybody don't get it. Everybody don't realize what they're hearing, the value, the quality, the, the ah of what they're hearing. Until you get to that point where you can really appreciate the word of God, you can miss stuff. You just hear, that was all right. Man, listen, I walked out of that thing. I was like, what just happened? Who is this guy? That's before he got really famous. That was, that was before. Before he even wrote his book that, that made him famous. Before all of that. Before the YouTube videos, he didn't have any books. He didn't have nothing. I was like, who is this guy? And I'm a preacher thing. And I was like, Lord, I beheld the glory of God in the word of God. God was in those words. And the point of it is, if you continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of God, you will be constantly transfigured or transformed into his very own image. In ever increasing splendor. Splendor is, it gets better and brighter and brighter. And from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So the more you go deeper and deeper into the word of God, 
constantly and you continue to behold God's glory in his word, you're going to be changed to be more and more like God. It transforms who you are. And that's the secret. Like many of us think, man, I'm just going to try hard. 2016 is the year I'm going to make my annual, whatever people make their rededications, whatever. Uh, what do they call those things? Where I commit, right, my resolutions, and then I'm going to make all the efforts I got to make to make it happen. I'm going to push, and I'm going to fight, and I'm going to make myself all that stuff. And then my February, March, because uh, yeah. that's human effort. Human effort's lame. But the word of God will transform your life. The more you get of the word of God, the more you fill yourself with the word of God, the more you read it, the more you see it, like you're looking in a mirror that looks perfect. Do, who, who wouldn't love a mirror like that? If you're looking at a mirror, you look perfect in the mirror. Like, wow, I like this mirror. But then you, you also want to see what you really look like because you walk out there and you think you're looking tight. And you're not tight. So you don't want a real mirror. But anyway, the word of God is that mirror where you look perfect in the mirror. You're like, wow, I look at this. Or it helps you to see what's not right. That's true also. So you look at it and you look at what you're supposed to be. And over time, the more you behold, you change into that. And that's one of the reasons why I love me some Bible teaching. We got some books home there. We just got a, a, another batch of books. It got to be like, how many books we just got? Baby? Like 80 or something? Yeah, we just got like 80 books or something. We have real books. And we just added, we just, we just doubled the books we have. And I'm like, I know why I love to sit down and read these Christian books and study the word of God. Because I'm like, this kind of revelation transforms your life. Things that people take 80 years to get to, you can get there in 80 days. Because you just behold it. You're, you're in this glory and the glory is changing you. Everybody understands that? So do you know that, let's want that, the glory of God can be ushered in through the word of God? Jesus said that his words are spirit and life in John 6, 63. Not only can we see God's glory through prayer, praise, and worship, he will manifest himself through our lives. What am I saying? He will manifest himself through the word of God. However, there's a catch. We have to believe it to see it. So do you know that the glory of God can be ushered in through the word of God? Jesus said that his words are spirit and life in John 6, 63. Not only can we see God's glory through prayer, praise, and worship, he will manifest himself through his word. However, there's a catch. We have to believe it to see it. So here are the scriptures saying that God can manifest himself in many different ways. And one of the ways he can manifest himself is through his word. But the only way you can see that manifestation is if you believe it. In other words, I can have 10 Bibles in my house and there's no power. I can even read the Bible four times. Like I told you, I, I, I got into a debate with an atheist who read the Bible four times. It's like, I read the Bible four times. Yeah, well, you obviously didn't get anything from it. So, because you didn't, he didn't understand Genesis 1-1. And that's what we were arguing about over on a radio program. And I was just like, how can you read the Bible four times and not believe anything in the book? That's the point of the book. If you don't believe it, there's nothing to get. There's, there, you don't get anything from a book you don't believe. The Bible is, is more than just information. You've got to believe the book. Everybody understands that? So for us to see God's word in his word, we've got to believe the word of God. For me to get any value out of the word of God, it has to be more than just information. It has to be a part of my belief system. It has to be a part of my heart. And that's how it gets in there, when I believe it. Standing off it. Let's pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. I thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your voice. Thank you for your voice. And I thank you, thank you. that by faith, by faith, I can see the manifestation of everything, of everything you have spoken. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that I will walk by faith and not by sight. And I believe that I will see the glory of God. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Amen.